Psalm 67, verse 5. Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. Then shall the earth yield her increase. And God, even our own God, let's start from verse 3. Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. O let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For thou shalt judge the people righteously. And govern the nations upon the earth, Sila. Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. Then shall the earth yield high. And God, even our own God, shall bless us. God shall bless us. Can I hear louder? Amen. God shall bless us. And all the ends of the earth shall hear him. The Lord bless his word in Jesus name. Quickly I speak on the subject the blessing of praise. The blessing of praise. Understanding basically the blessing of praise and like I have said it's a blessing Sunday. It's the first Sunday in the month of June and it's the first Sunday we are here to open up the, 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 the open up season. We are basically here today to offer praise and worship to the Almighty. And we need to take note of two basic things. Number one, praise. And that includes worship. It's our purpose in the earth. Praise. That also includes worship. Is our purpose in the earth. In Psalm 102 and in verse 18, Psalm 102 and in verse 18, Scripture said, Psalm 102 verse 18, it says, It shall be written for the generation to come. This shall be written for the generation to come. And the people which shall be created shall praise the Lord. That is, I am creating a generation of people to praise me. I am creating them for my praise. So praise is our purpose in the earth. Number two, praise, and that includes worship, is our destiny in eternity. Is our destiny is in, in, in eternity. Praise, that is worship, is our purpose in the earth. Praise, and that includes worship as well, is our destiny in eternity. Praise is what we are to do while we are in the earth. Praise is what we will do when we get to heaven. Revelation chapter 15 verse 2 all the way to verse 4. And I saw as it were a sea of glass mingled with fire. And them that had gotten victory over the beast and over his image and over his mark. And over the number of his name, they stand on the sea of glass, having harp, the harps of God. And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God. And the song of the Lamb say, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints. Who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name? For thou only art holy. For all nations shall come and worship before thee. For thy judgments are made manifest. Praise and worship is what we are to do in the earth. Praise and worship is what we are to do in eternity. Now, what does praise and worship entail? What does it entail? Because when you talk about praise and worship, a lot of people think of many things. But number one, it entails, number one, how we live. How we live. In your praise and in your worship, you live to such a point where your life is a praise to God. In Isaiah 43, 21, he said, these people have I formed for myself. They shall show forth my praise. How we live. Living in a way 
that glorifies God. Number two, what we do. Praise and worship entails what we do. Matthew chapter 5 and in verse 16, the Bible said, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. The things we do, the mark we make that make people to honor God is part of your praise. How you live, what you do, and thirdly, what we say, what we express. When it comes to singing or thanking or testifying, what we say. Psalm 7 verse 17, Psalm 7 verse 17, I will praise the Lord according to his righteousness and I will sing praise to the name of the Lord most high. For most people this is the only thing they consider as praise the singing. But it doesn't matter how much you sing. If your life does not praise does not bring glory to God you are not in praise. If your actions the things you do does not bring honor and glory to God you are not in praise. Having said that, how does praise bless our lives? What is the blessing of praise? Number one, praise is a spiritual climate changer. It's a spiritual climate changer. It is an atmosphere changer. Praise introduces around a person the atmosphere or the climate of God's presence. The atmosphere around a murmurer, a grumbler, is different from the atmosphere around the worshiper. In Psalm 114 verse 1, when Israel came out of Egypt, Judah was his sanctuary. Judah was his sanctuary. Judah means praise. God lived. The climate was the climate of praise and so God was there. Praise is a climate changer. The climate that produces the favorable and the exciting around the person. Number two, praise opens you up to the will and mind of God for your life. It opens you up to the will and the mind of God for your life. That's how blessed you get with praise. The story in 2 Kings is a very familiar story where there was a need for somebody to prophesy in 2 Kings chapter 3 and in verse 15. And there was a minstrel that came and the mind of God was instantly made known. By that prophetic operation. First Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 18 said. In everything give thanks. For this is the will of God. Give praise under God. This will connect you to the will of God for your life. In case you are wondering what, what is God saying to me about my life and destiny and future. Become more praiseful. Become more worshipful. And it will connect you. To the will and the mind of God for your life. Thirdly, praise is a spiritual lifter of people. It's a spiritual lifter of people. Another way to say it is that praise is a spiritual level changer. It lifts you, it changes levels. In Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 18 and 19, I will rejoice in the Lord and then the Lord will make my feet like hinds feet and make me walk upon my high places. And as we praise this morning, somebody's level will change. Number four, praise is a spiritual obstacle crusher 
obstacle crusher. Obstacles are crushed and collapsed before the force of praise. That is how praise blesses you. Obstacle crusher. At the, at the wall of Jericho, the obstacles were crushed. In jo Joshua chapter 6 verse 20, by the force of praise. Even in Psalm 114 verse 1 to the end, the, the Red Sea was crushed by the force of praise. It's a spiritual obstacle crusher. Number five, gr praise imparts the climate of accept acceptance and favor. It imparts the climate of acceptance and favor. When a person is a worshiper of God, a praiser of God, it imparts upon you a climate, a climate and atmosphere of acceptance. That was what happened to David in 1 Samuel chapter 16. From verse 17, they were looking for a worshiper and they found David. And David came before Saul in verse 21. And Saul loved him and loved him. And he became his armor bearer. The climate of acceptance and favor. It destroys the climate of rejection and disfavor. Number six, praise is the path, is pathway to royalty and authority in the kingdom. Is pathway to royalty and authority in the kingdom. There is a tribe called the tribe of Judah, and Judah means praise. Genesis chapter 49, verse 8. Judah means praise. It says, Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemy. That's authority. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. Judah is a lion's wealth. At the end he said, the scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor the Lord give her from between his feet. Judah means praise. What does it mean? The tribe of praise is the tribe of kings. If you can get a praiser, you have seen a king in the making. The tribe of praise is the tribe of kings. It is the way to royalty. It is the way to kingdom authority. He say your hand shall be upon the neck of your enemies. Finally, number seven. Praise activates the supply system of God. It activates the supply system of God. Let the people praise thee, then shall the earth yield her increase. There is a supply system in the kingdom. There is a supply system from heaven that is activatable by the force of praise. That means your praise will confront scarcity and confront shortage. Hallelujah. So I welcome you this morning. To this praise service and what is the focus of our praise today number one for the help so far received by God especially in this season for help so far received in first Samuel chapter 7 and in verse 12 Samuel took a stone set it between Mizpeh and Sheh and called the name of it Ebenezer, saying, He that has the Lord helped us. Ebenezer, he took his stone. So far has God helped us. There are many of us here today. If not for the help of God, you won't be out here now. So far has the Lord helped us. Throughout the season of the lockdown, we saw the help of God. Number two, for frustrating the expectations of the wicked. Frustrating the expectations of the wicked. 
wicked devil and wicked agents of the devil, they, many of them had very wicked expectations. The enlightenment service we had with the permission of, or rather with the um, conclusion of Cannes just before the lockdown, that one enlightenment, many people, some agents of the, the, the devil spoke through some of his people and I saw that they should watch them two weeks, four weeks, there will be an outbreak and that the outbreak only happened with the devil. He frustrated the tokens of liars. He make a diviner smile. He disappoints the devices of the crafty. So that their hands cannot perform their enterprise. Who is he that saith it? And he cometh to pass when the Lord commanded it not. Hallelujah! I don't care what anybody has said or is saying or is wishing you or is wishing the body of Christ or the church of Jesus. It will never come to pass. It will never come to pass. Now, there were those who thought that the closure of the church was the closure of everything. But we were more explosive during the lockdown than, 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 than food distribution was happening at the frequency of fire. Drug distribution, everything was going on. I mean, the devil thought and wished and felt that it was the church was gone. There were agents of the devil rejoicing that church was not holding anymore. But the scarcity did not spare them. <laughs> the shortage did not spare them. But we, we did. And you are there. Is God speaking to somebody here? And I stand here by the same mantle in which I preach. The expectation of the devil concerning the church in Nigeria and the church worldwide shall continue to fail. Shall continue to fail. Shall continue to fail. Shout the loudest. Amen. It disappointed the devices of the crafty so that their hands cannot perform their enterprise. Job chapter 5 verse 12. Please take your seat. Their hands could not perform their enterprise. Their imaginations couldn't come to pass. It is something to thank God for. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Something to celebrate. Something to be appreciative. And there were various other expectations in your own personal life that God frustrated. Number three, for preventing us from being consumed. Many people were consumed in this season of coronavirus aff aff affliction. Globally, those who lost their lives, those who lost their jobs, those who lost livelihood, those who are st struggling in every realm. But it's of the lost message that we are not consumed. Lamentation 3.22 For his mercies, because his compassions fail not, they are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Beloved brothers and sisters, we shall celebrate God, even if it is for seven more minutes for these reasons. And then we shall be said,